so the, the opportunity for us together uh, is is twofold. And I was thinking about that today in the morning when I was scanning the news and the craziness going on, because I got asked yesterday uh, by a good friend of mine who's a former SEAL competitive shooter uh, and uh, lives up near San Jose. And he told me that, you know, protesters uh, blocked off the highway and just started walking around with hammers and crowbars just smashing windows uh, of cars. And he's got a concealed carry. And he called me up and he was like, you know, he said, if I was in the car with my kids and this happened, he says, like, I, I got it. Like, you don't know where it's going to escalate. Like, you wait and you think, well, maybe they're just going to, you know, like wreck the car, but does it, do they then grab you out and decide they don't like your face or the shirt you're wearing and they're going to, he said, you know, you got hundreds of people swarming cars. He said, like, what's my gun going to do? Maybe I drop three or four guys, but they're going to swarm. He says, I'm going to get murdered. And he's like, this guy's a, this guy is a retired SEAL shooting competitive shooter very fit going i don't even know what to do so he, he called me up asking for stuff and so it's interesting because uh people always want some holy grail answer what would i do here oh well you press this button on my shirt right and then you morph into you know a transformer or this is the invisibility button and you disappear, right? The, the, you, no one knows what to do. And this is all the bullshit of, of most training is everyone says, this is the technique to thwart this. There's no technique. What there is, is you need to fight. And the fight isn't always physical. And the first fight is the fight in your head, the emotional, psychological fight. Can I keep my shit together? Because for me to maintain critical thinking and see an opportunity for escape or an improvised weapon or, or some other strategy slash tactic that's going to uh, you know, resolve in my enhanced safety, it's not, if I'm thinking about doing a reverse punch or a sidekick, that's not the answer. And that's where people lost it, lose it. You can see on the videos where they're showing cops trying to handle shit, they are so frazzled. They are so confused. Why? Because nobody has released their mindset, solve the problem, solve the problem. And then said, look, these are our, our rules of engagement, but solve the problem. So they're afraid to do stuff because they're going to be the next poster child for racism. Uh, they're afraid to do stuff because uh, their leadership doesn't support them. You know, you bring in the National Guard and when the National Guard leaves, do people respect the police? Let's say National Guard suppresses everything. What has that done for the, you know, the police reputation? These are big, big societal things. And I know you didn't sign up here to, <laughs> you know, have a talk on on uh, on politics and stuff like this, but but do you understand this in directly ties into everything that we're about, right? Enhancing survivability, but understanding not just the physical requirements and the physical consequences, but the psychophysical. The mind navigates the body. The mind navigates the body, and the most important, the most important thing. Uh, is managing our fear, managing our fear. How many of you have my no fear, uh, the digital no fear, the 90 minute thing? Um, if you can afford to get it, get it. It's on sale 50% during COVID. I give it to you, but, but like right now, this is how I'm feeding my family. So friggin' spring for it. It's 99 bucks. Uh, but it, it lays out a map for how to manage fear. And I've had insane, insane feedback from it. And if you don't get it, you don't get it. It's, it's, it's fine. But I will tell you the first thing that happens 
is in, and, and I've been a asking this question in every class since the 80s, where's the first place you got hit? Where's the first place you got hit in a real violent encounter? And when people don't understand my system, the holistic element of the system, they say, well, he punched me in the face, he kicked me in the balls, I got stabbed, I got shot. But when we debrief and I talk to people and I say to them, did you know anything was going to happen? Did you have a bad feeling? And they go, yeah, fuck. I could feel like something was wrong with this person, the way they were talking to me. I could feel. And this years later became, uh, you know, part of our Be Your Own Bodyguard program. We talked about the, the, the body's GPS system, the body's intuitive radar, that every victim of violence who lived to tell the tale said they had a bad feeling before the attack. I'll say that again and memorize that. Every victim of violence who lived to tell the tale said they had a bad feeling before the attack. That means our body's intuition and instincts is like a personal alarm. Our job is when we get that bad feeling to embrace it, recognize it, honor it, and then evaluate. Because sometimes it could be, uh, you know, misinterpreted like false evidence appearing real. It could be something that triggers something in us. We get a fear spike. A great example is, is you know, uh, you hear a noise outside. If you're in America and you hear a noise outside right now, you're probably not going to think first, that's probably a skunk digging around in my backyard. Oh, it's probably just the wind blowing a tree and a branch is hitting, you know, the house and that's giving that rattle. If you're in America right now and you hear noise outside, what are you thinking? Fucking looters or home invasion, right? Because our, 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 our fear is so hyped up. But think about pre-anarchy and chaos. If you were up in a country house and you heard like a, like a, a tap, 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 you know. I don't know if you guys can hear that because I got the headphones on. You know, your first thing is to pull the sheets up over your head and go, someone's at the back door. And then eventually an hour later, you go outside with your golf club or your baseball bat and you see that it's just a tree in the wind banging on, on something, right? So the first place is, the, and this is the moral and the lesson in my, in my silly, not silly story here. When we get a fear spike, that fear spike must be a signal like on a radar blip. It's a cue to look at the clue, to evaluate, is this a real threat? Do I need to do something now? And then to remember that there are lots of times in life that we need to take action while we're scared. We don't have time. We don't have time to stress inoculate and set up scenario training and go through it, right? And there are some events that who the fuck would want to do that? You know, I could say like after my 11th home invasion, I sort of got used to it and I was ready. Who the hell wants to do like have 11 home invasions to, to stress inoculate? You don't. So in the moment that something's happening, you need to manage your fear. And so that is the secret to self-defense. And everything that I'm teaching you, and this is the big thing here, everything that I'm teaching you and where we differ when I talk about the categories, category one, all martial arts, category two, combat sports, category three, reality-based self-defense, category four, violent encounters initiated by fucking predators. When that happens, something different happens in our physiology. You can be scared before your first jiu-jitsu match, boxing match, kickboxing match, MMA fight, and you could throw up like Tyson used to throw up before his fights. You go in there, but it's a known entity. You're at a certain weight class. You've agreed to the certain rules. You're wearing a mouth guard and a cup. You've got your hands are taped or wrapped. If you're doing left way, they're just wrap. If you're MMA, it's got a little glove. You know what all the, you know what to expect. You can still be scared and you do it anyhow. But you understand how when sudden violence erupts to you where you didn't agree we call this the consent awareness preparedness model. That when I consent to a fight, I can have all of the, the physiological changes and be nervous and scared. But because I've consented to it, I can start to visualize and practice it.
because I know it's happening next Saturday night at eight o'clock and I'm in this weight class and I know this is my opponent and I know how he fights because I've got tape of him and I'm studying him. And people don't realize that when you practice a martial art, you are actually under that same umbrella. Hey class, today we're gonna practice round kick to the head. Today we're gonna do this takedown. Today we're gonna do grab your partner's gi, grab the wrist, do this. And you can be nervous, right? It's sparring night, you can be nervous. You wanna, you got performance anxiety. You maybe you're gonna get hit and it's gonna hurt a little bit, but no one's trying to disembowel you. No one's trying to cut your head off. No one's dragging you to a secondary crime scene. No one's burning your house down, right? And so to make you safer, I got to do these lectures every once in a while when they come from my heart. Um, and, and hopefully you, you receive them that way. I, I know that some of you, you know, you go on here and go, hey, I'm supposed to learn explosive speed. I'm supposed to get in shape. If you're dead, because you couldn't handle your fear, then it didn't fucking matter whether you were an ectomorph or a mesomorph or whether you had 20% body fat or 3% body fat. It doesn't fucking matter. So take this to heart, right? All of you, everyone here practices a martial art. And, and, and aside from doing the spear with, with us, when I say earlier, and I said like fear is the key, that understanding your fear, but using it as a signal, like a radar blip, like we are all... Visualize, here's an amazing metaphor for you. The screen that we're looking at right now, pretend it's, it's a, like a radar blip and you're like on a, on a ship or you're you know, part of some military installation and all of a sudden you go, is that a UFO? Is that a missile? Is that uh, like a, some weird bird or a, a small plane flying through here? Like you look at it and you don't just go, that must be, can't be a missile. You don't like dismiss it. You immediately see the signal and then you need to evaluate it. You need to research it. It's the exact same thing with you. Anytime in your life when you get a fear spike, you only get a fear spike when something's outside your comfort zone. Does that make sense? If it's outside your comfort zone, that means you have something to learn about it. You're not used to it yet. And so in, in, the, in the sense of enhancing the safety of myself, my family, my team, my community, I need to have a system in place that says, okay, I'm gonna research that. That's our fuck fear acronym. Face it, understand it, control it, know it. F-U-C-K, the best acronym ever in the world, fuck fear, right? And so it's like, it, like in the moment when you're scared and you go shit and you're like, oh my God, I'm so scared, but this is happening pretty fast. Uh, let me open up the uh, 90 minute, it's actually 97 minute no fear seminar. You don't have 97 minutes to review. You need, to, you need something quick. Fuck fear. Face it. Understand it. Control it. And so the idea there is the understand part is the research part. Now, and obviously, in a sudden violent encounter, you don't have time to start doing research. That's why I say to you, the most important stuff that, that you can learn from me is this connection this, this tactical trinity of three things, the mind, body, spirit, but through the filter that I've created for the last 40 years. Understand the fear spike and understand that I can take that and turn that into a fuel and a positive energy in this metaphor of right now, you're all looking at me, your bodies are the car, your mind is your nav system, your GPS, where do you need to go? I need to get to safety or I need to get there to help my family. I need to, I'm the rescue, whatever it is. But you got to get, there's a destination. And so in this metaphor, your car, in this metaphor, is your body and your physicality. Are you, are you conditioned to do this? Your mind is the map. Do I know how to drive a car? Do I know how to start a car? Do I know where I'm going? And then in this metaphor, we need gasoline. And what is the gasoline in a high-stress situation? It's fuel. I don't want any of you millennials say, well, I got a Tesla, fuck off, right? Don't, don't ruin my metaphor, right? The, 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 we need to turn fuel into, and, and your car can't go that far. What is it, five, 600 miles, and then you're like stuck. Okay, so um, just kidding here. The, 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 gas, the gas is fear, and the fear needs to be, it's a consumable organic energy that you can use to fuel what you need to do. Right. And if you just think that way, that's where it starts. Now, the next part of the tactical trinity 
is what I've developed. And that's what I'm teaching you every week. Spear, the spear system. And the theme this week has been huge uh, in so far as uh, uh, how, how many of you, when I, when I kind of reframe Monday and Tuesday, when I said spear, spontaneous protection, enabling accelerated response is not the forearms. It's the entire system. It's that if I need to move, I need to move spontaneously in a violent encounter, right? And so it, I could be kicking someone in the ankle or I could be spearing somebody across the head. Both of them are the spear system. The spear tactic is the forearm. So what I want you to understand is we've taken the, the, the organic reaction to danger, which is fear. And then we've looked at and studied the behavioral considerations. What happens when there's a fear spike? right? The hands will come up to protect the head. If there's time and space, they will push away danger. So we've looked at that and then figured out a way through using classical conditioning, aka Pavlovian conditioning, by doing these drills over and over again, you're myelinating the neurotransmitter that when we micro flinch, our hands drive out and they drive out fingers splayed outside 90, right? And so we figured out, so what you're looking in the category element of, of uh, uh, all martial arts, combat sports, reality-based self-defense, then violent encounters that are initiated by the, by the predator. When the, look at what we're doing. When you study any reality-based martial art, you're practicing complex motor skills. Sorry. Sorry for anyone that thinks you're not. You're going, no, this is how we do this. 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 And then we call it self-defense. But that's the, that's the toolbox carpenter uh, handyman analogy. We're learning how to use a hammer and a saw and an awl and, and, and a crowbar, but we don't understand the blueprint of violence. The evidence of that is looking at any video of real violence, particularly of trained people using real violence. Right. And my favorite video of that was a couple of years ago was a sergeant in the Israeli army who intercepted a knife wheeling terrorist in a marketplace in Israel, and he confronted the guy, and the guy uh, uh, ran away from him, slashing civilians on the way, went into a store, and the sergeant ran into the store, and now the CCTV camera's on him, and uh, this guy's got the knife and, and comes towards him, and the guy throws a kick. Can you all see me here? He throws a front kick that looks like this. Because the guy's slashing at the knife, and he goes, ah! And he throws a front kick where, like, it's the shittiest front kick in the world as far as form goes, but it hits the guy. And the guy falls back, and then that guy's courage was contagious, and other people in the store started to move in. The guy kicks him, and then he grabs a, a shelf and yanks it off and hits the guy with a shelf. And then, you know, people swarm the guy and suppress the guy. And what did the martial art world do? They said, this is our martial art. This guy's a, a, this guy's a black belt in. He's an instructor in this martial art. And I wanted to pull my fucking hair out online. The guy had balls of steel this big. He charged towards a terrorist. He put himself in danger to save other people. He threw technically a shitty kick and then hit the guy with a shelf. In, when did you guys ever do the kata where you hit people with a shelf? This has nothing to do with his martial art. This has to do, you know, and what they didn't mention when they're marketing the martial art is the guys in, in the Israeli army. Do you think the fact that, that he's a military that he's a, in the military, that he's a soldier, that he's sworn an oath to protect his, his, the citizens. You think that had anything to do with charging the bad guy? Fuck yeah. And so what I wrote, I said, look, the guy's a fucking hero, but don't use it as propaganda to market your system. So I'm not knocking all of that. We need to learn how to use hammers, right? I've always told people for years, I don't care how you punch vertical fist, you're Wing Chun influenced. Corkscrew punch, you're, 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 you're a boxer. First two knuckles, you're Kyu Kushinkai, you're Taekwondo. I don't give a fuck. 
how you punch. I give a shit whether you have the balls to punch, whether you have the courage to make that shot happen, right? So that's what it's about. Now, where did Spear evolve and where did all that happen is, hey, where are you going? I wanna, I'm doing my thing, okay. Um, um, that's my new puppy that you guys can see in that, in that other screen there. Um, okay, so, uh, so to understand this, and then we'll jump, in, jump into the physical stuff, the, the physical part of the spear system emerged from a singular focus on studying the category four. When a true predator initiates a violent attack, we are hit emotionally and psychologically. Ah, uh, fuck. Um, the, uh, um, when he, my dog is scaring the shit out of people walking. Um, the, uh, oh, fuck, I hate that. Hang on, I got freaking out neighbors right now. Okay. Everything sounds good. Nobody's getting mauled. Um, so when, when the predator initiates, the first thing we're, we're hit is our emotional system, our psychological system. Everyone concur and get that? There's a moment you're going, oh, fuck, right? The, depending on the speed, scope, distance of that, we see this or we go, it could be your ass getting tight and you're holding your breath. Oh, fuck, what's going on here as you're processing? If it's danger close, the hands will come up. So what we did is we said, how do we weaponize the start of flinch? How do we make that happen? So that became the whole spear system. Then that evolved into all the no fear, the cycle behavior and all that. Because as I continued to re research that, I was like, I need to be able to explain to people what they're learning, why they're learning and how to practice that. Okay. So that's the science. I wanted you to understand that I, and that my intention wasn't to get on here and talk for 24 minutes uh, today. It was to do just a, like a, a, a light talk and, and get going. Um, but, you know, sometimes when I feel this stuff coming out, I, I, I want to share it with you. We're recording. So, so this is stuff that you can refer back to. But this talk and understanding why we practice is, is what I believe, if God forbid, or whoever you believe in, uh, you are in that insanely dangerous situation where you're going, where part of your brain is going, is this it? Is this the day that I lose everything? That you remember you're a human weapon, that you remember what you've been trained to do through this specific type of training is to use fear as a fuel and to weaponize your body, to have that startle flinch support you and understand that you're a fucking human weapon system, right? And this comes back to full circle, people asking me, uh, you know, hey, what would I do, you know, in a riot? What would I do if I got swarmed? What would I do? And I go, you do what you got to do. You got to do what you got to do. I can't, I can't explain. There's not a move. There's not a technique there, right? Do you play dead or do you charge the threat, right? Those are two extremes in, in a situation and, and, and both, both could work. You gotta think about that and you gotta in, intuit what is, the, what is the, the most important thing. Okay, let's jump into the class. Let me close this one up over here and get going. I wrote out a whole new thing I want to do.